Hi, my name's Joan, but most of my friends call me the Crepe Queen because I make wedding cakes out of crepes. Now throughout this fall, I've been showing you some of the basics of crepe making, but today and for the next three weeks, we're gonna be building crepe cakes. And it all starts with the perfect crepe. So today is really advanced crepe making for the perfectly golden and round crepe you need as the foundation of your cake. Now let's start with number one. When you're making a perfect crepe cake, you've got to start with the right pan. Now I have a big collection of crepe pans, both carbon steel and blue steel, and enamel coated cast iron. I've got it all. But for a crepe cake, I like to use my blue steel. This is an eight inch. The reason I like blue steel for a crepe cake is because there's a sharp edge here and we get a crisp edge and we get a very round, perfect crepe. Now, those of you who've been watching me know that I love my carbon steel. That last one is a Dubuillet, this one is a Moviel. Dubuillet makes it as well, but there's more of a curve to the pan. So you don't get that crisp edge you need. So today, blue steel, as I mentioned, that's my pick sharp edge. This is a six inch because we're going to start at the beginning with a miniature, a small cake, a small holiday cake. And this week we're going to make the perfect crepe. Now I've noticed I've got a little smoke rising, so I'm going to just take it off the heat a little bit. I don't want it too, too hot. It'll take about 10 seconds to cool down a bit. While it's cooling, let me measure my batter. Now when I make uh, crepes, I eyeball. I like to use my eyes. I've been doing it so long. But if you're a beginner, I recommend three tablespoons. And what you do is you pour just like this in the center, then round and round you go. Round and round you go. Okay. Now, I've noticed that there's just a little bit of laciness. My pan was slightly too hot. And I can fill in at those, that, those little holes with the dribble that's left in my cup. Again, I like to swirl it. And I'm going to give it about 15 seconds. Then I'm going to shift the direction of the pan so I get an even golden bottom. For those of you who want a fresher, there's a link in my description to Crepe Making 101, where you'll learn all the basics. I've got a little... Um, OXO spatula that I'm going to use. Love these. They're reinforced in the middle, very thin edge, and very flexible. This is a great, and this is actually called their cookie spatula. It's great with a six inch pan that I'm using. Oh my gosh, how great is that? See all the golden laciness to it? And it's perfectly round. When you have one like this, there's nothing that you need to do to make it extra special. So what I'm going to do is just slide this off, and when you're making your crepes, always cover them with a clean white, I like white cloths, but color doesn't really matter, but a clean cloth so it stays moist. Now I'd like to show you, I'm going to intentionally make a mistake so you can see how easy it is to fix it. This time, I'm going to put in four tablespoons instead of three. Sometimes that happens. Oops, ignore that. Anyways. We're going to go, whoop, ignore that. <laughs> Anyways, I'll pick those up in a minute. Do you see how this is extra thick? Well, no problem. We don't want it too, too thick. And all I'm going to do is pour it back in the jar so it's the thinner crepe. Now, I'm going to go replace those spatulas. Okay, this is great because I'm going to give you two demos with this one. Actually, I'm going to give you three. Let's start. There's a little laciness in here that can be corrected. This is the most, this is, I do this all the time with my crepe cakes. If there's a, a slight tear in a crepe, any damage, anything that is not perfect, a simple, this is an OXO um, brush that I love for correcting. Now, um, 
By the way, for all the items that I'm mentioning, I hope you'll take a look in the description. I've got a link to Amazon for most of the items we're using today. Okay, I look for golden around the edge, dry on top. Ah, how perfect is this? I'm gonna slide underneath. By the way, this is a little bigger. Uh, great versatile piece. This one is from Dioro. Again, I've got the link in the description. Now this one looks really good. However, do you see what I, I call this a love handle? I can't have that on my crepe kit. So I'm going to just show you how easy it is to fix the love handle. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to just slide this off, rest this, turn this off. If you've got a scissors, you can have perfect crepes every time. What I'm going to do is simply lift it a little bit. How perfect is that? Now we've got a perfectly round crepe and we're in business. So just as a refresher, oops, there you go, perfectly round. Just as a refresher, you want to start with a right pan and you want the blue steel crisp edge for your crepe cakes. Next, you want the right amount of batter, but if you overfill, pour it back right back in the jar. Number three, you can always use a pastry brush to repair if you've got holes in your crepe. And finally, if you own scissors, you can always have round crepes. Now don't forget, I want you to be sure and review uh, Crepe Making 101, and also I'll have a link to batter making. So you can be making perfectly perfect crepes for your crepe cake. And I hope you'll join me next week where I'm actually going to build a holiday crepe cake. And I want to teach you so you can amaze and entertain your guests. I hope you enjoyed this session and that you'll follow me and subscribe. Please take a look at the description for discount coupons and links to the equipment I'm using. It was great seeing you. I wish you a happy holiday season and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.